I give the floor to uh, Suhail. Um, how do you say Suhail? Suhail. Suhail. Yeah. Okay. Suhail. Uh, on private loader, we've had a number of talks on, uh, on loaders uh, during this podconf, um, and it, it's actually a, a topic of interest this year. You have the floor. Thank you. So, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Suhail. Very happy to be presenting here this year at BotConf. So, I work as a malware reverse engineer with Intel 471. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about private loader, uh, the malware behind the Havoc Recon paper install service. So, we'll first start by introducing paper install services. Uh, we'll talk about uh, this, the discovery of a private loader. We'll take an in-depth look at uh, the malware itself, its modules, uh, its communication protocol, and then we'll talk about our tracking of private loader, um, what, um, uh, what malware families was it dropping, how did we track it, and then we'll finish with a conclusion. So, these paper install services uh, allow to monetize wide distribution of malware and potentially unwanted applications. So these providers will offer a way for malware operators to offload uh, the malware distribution to them, and then they offer them uh, a couple more options like geo-targeted installs. So they can purchase these installs, also named uh, loads, in exchange for money, especially cryptocurrency. So a malware operator will purchase a number of installs, and this service will work to guarantee that same number uh, of infected bots. So these services are mainly used by low to mid-tier actors to distribute commodity malware, like downloaders, info stealers, uh, remote access trojans. But there were also some exceptions which uh, we'll uh, look at at this talk. So there are multiple public and private perp install services. Uh, public ones are accessible through the clear net or dark net. Uh, I think one of them was introduced during a previous presentation, install shop. Uh, there are uh, others like install best. So usually just create an account, uh, deposit some uh, cryptocurrency into a wallet and then start uh, uh, providing URLs and payloads. Uh, then uh, the service will work to uh, distribute these. Uh, there are also some private uh, uh, advertisements uh, for these in, in underground forums where individuals uh, will uh, offer these services uh, as well. And these forums will uh, uh, provide escrow services to ensure proper transactions between uh, the parties. Uh, these generally go for uh, prices uh, cheap to expensive depending on some uh, constraints which we'll uh, examine in a bit. So these uh, paper install services will, most of them will use some in-house custom loader for payload delivery. So the methods of distribution that these services will use will uh, work to deliver this custom loader to victims. So they're just delivering a single payload. This loader will generally connect to a C2 server and then retrieve all these payloads uh, to install. And this loader must tell the C2 something about that, that these pills were installed, so it will communicate back information or statistics or logs uh, to confirm these installs as proof. Uh, this information usually will cost money because it is proof uh, to the client that the payload was successfully installed. So these people usually care about quantity more than quality. So they don't care if your uh, machine is in a high value enterprise environment or if it's a virtual machine even. So uh, they will infect as many bots as they can because they have uh, multiple installs that they should uh, be able to guarantee. So an infected bot will uh, and can be used multiple times, uh, reused multiple times to uh, keep this flow of payloads coming. So for popular um, paper install services like Private Loader, for example, uh, which delivers uh, tens to hundreds of malicious payloads, it will create like a, a clutter on malware on, on, on a clutter of malware on the victim machine, uh, which can even reach hundreds of, of payloads uh, at one a single time running on the machine, which renders uh, the system uh, unusable. So a typical paper install transaction will, will go like this. So the operator will provide upfront payment in cryptocurrency, the malicious payload or payloads to distribute the number of installs they want. These usually go in the hundreds or thousands. And then uh, geo-targeting preferences. Uh, this could be a continent, a region, a country, for example. Uh, and they also offer uh, this option called mixed geographic locations. This, this usually goes for cheap because uh, it involves countries from all over the world and uh, the paper install service have some, uh, some kind of leeway with, with, uh, with which machines they, they, they could infect. But uh, more restrictive options will go for more expensive prices because uh, getting these bots in these specific geographic locations uh, could be a bit challenging. 
So on the other hand, the service operators will provide a payload distribution, of course. It was offloaded to them. Uh, they do this in many ways. So uh, they could uh, use bot masters. They could themselves be bot masters or uh, procure these uh, services from uh, uh, people who are advertising themselves uh, uh, that they want to monetize their large botnets. So uh, this can be used. Uh, other, another popular option is the use of affiliates. So uh, they will outsource the malware delivery to uh, affiliates who will get paid a share of the cut if they uh, successfully deliver these payloads. So the DTPs uh, of these affiliates will change because most of them uh, will use their own way to deliver th these payloads because uh, the goal is to uh, disseminate the malware uh, as much as possible. Uh, another option is uh, a use of other PPI services, which is a bit absurd, uh, because, uh, for example, uh, PPI service X will buy loads from a, P a better PPI service Y to deliver their custom loader through uh, the other paper install service, but still generate a profit, because they're, what they're doing is, they, is they're delivering a single payload that will download multiple other payloads that were already paid for uh, by their clients. Uh, so uh, we've seen this in, in, in the real world. For example, GCleaner paper install service was using private loader for its own delivery. Um, so, uh, and of course, uh, the last point is uh, they should uh, provide uh, the payload delivery to infected hosts. So we first became aware of private loader in late July 2021. We believe that it has been active at least since uh, May of that same year. Uh, this is a private paper install service. Uh, the service itself and its operators uh, are unknown. Uh, they managed to stay under the radar for, uh, for a long time, even though their malware is, is very noisy. So uh, what first caught our, our attention to this was is that we were seeing some samples of virus toll that were downloading a lot of malware. So this variety of, of the payload and large amount of them uh, caught our attention and we started uh, working this, on this malware family. So it was programmed C++, it used uh, HTTP for C2 communication, uh, it used some anti-analysis stuff like encrypted strings, like in certain uh, random arithmetic operations uh, in the form of junk code. Um, but the most uh, overhaul, uh, the, most, uh, the, the major overhaul that it underwent was in August 2021, uh, where it uh, underwent some changes from being a, mono a monolithic malware to becoming a modular malware with multiple modules. So we believe that Private Loader is uh, the internal name of the project because in earlier builds, we saw some uh, debug paths that included the, the, the directory name Private Loader. So Private Loader is uh, distributed through a network of malicious websites that will offer cracked software. So these are SEO optimized, so if you uh, search for software name plus download crack or download serial, usually you will find uh, these uh, results in the top of, of, of the search engine results. Uh, navigating to the page, uh, you'll see a download crack button. This one is retrieved from a remote server, and then when clicked, uh, the user will be redirected multiple times, and at the end, download a password-protected archive with either a setup file or a self-extracting archive. So this infrastructure has been tied to uh, a known affiliate paper install service called Install UST by researchers from Sophos Labs, and it does the same thing. It, it, the affiliates will get the JavaScript to include on their websites and on their blogs and, and, uh, and eventually get paid for uh, installs that they get. Uh, this is the main distribution method for private loader. We haven't seen it uh, being distributed any other way. So uh, either uh, the guys behind private loader are actually the ones behind this service or are merely paying another paper install service to deliver their own uh, service is, is, is a big question mark. So as we said, the, the, the life cycle of a private loader infection will start with uh, the download of, of uh, of a malicious setup file. So this setup file itself will bundle multiple malware families that are dropped to disk and executed, like smoke loader, redline, uh, gcleaner, et cetera. But one of the payloads could be uh, the private loader, uh, loader module. So this loader module's sole purpose is to download and execute the core module, which has the, the actual core functionality of the malware. So the core module will communicate with the, with the paper install uh, service backend, retrieve the installs, execute them, and then clutter the machine with even more malware. So one of these payloads can be a, a service module, or what, you call, uh, what we call a persistence module. So this module will schedule itself to run at regular intervals. It will check for self-updates. 
but also download another loader uh, and execute it to keep the the uh, the infected bot always part of uh, of, the, of the botnet and always keep uh, receiving these downloads. So these guys don't care about the quality, only the quantity. So loader module is the first stage. Uh, it includes multiple loader C2s that are used to retrieve the main configuration. Uh, it includes multiple URLs that are requested with a GET request. And these responses can either contain encoded, encrypted, or plain text main C2 configurations. For example, is the configuration we see there. So taking a look at uh, a single endpoint of these, we see uh, the one called proxies.txt. This could easily be mistaken for a list of proxies, but uh, these uh, lines are, uh, most of them are, are, are just decoys, and the only interesting line is line 119, where the actual IP of the uh, C2 address is, is uh, encoded there. So it, the, the IP address is taken, the port is discarded, and then it is rearranged. So, so from 145.60.133, it becomes uh, 45.133.160. So this is the main C2 address, and it is used to retrieve a configuration to download uh, the, the encrypted call module. So when we send a request to this endpoint, we respond with a, an encrypted response with a, with a one byte XOR key that is hard coded in the sample. So the decrypted response is a download configuration for the encrypted core module. It is usually uh, stored on the Discord CDN with the .dmp uh, extension, but lately we've seen that they can use some private infrastructure to hold this as well. So the loader module will decrypt, reflectively load the core module DLL, and then it will build a parameter buffer that it will supply to the core module's entry point. So this parameter buffer is a context buffer to help the core module uh, uh, get all the information it needs to start getting the install. So what, two important fields are a region code integer that is hard-coded inside the loader module, for example, number two, we'll look at this one shortly, and then the main C2 host that was retrieved by the loader and which is used by the core module for communication. So the core module likes to run with elevated privileges. So either the setup file that was retrieved from the delivery network will prompt the user to run it with elevated privileges, or uh, if that's not the case, it will use a, a widely documented technique to perform a user access control bypass on Windows 10 that involves the system executable computer defaults.exe. So when it gets these privileges, it will disable Windows Defender by directly writing to the registry. This is done to, of course, uh, avoid detection when installs are retrieved and then executed on the infected host. So uh, back to the region code. So when uh, this configuration is read by the core module from uh, by the core module from that parameter buffer, this region code integer is converted to a string using using a conversion table or more technically a switch statement. So this table is frequently updated, and, uh, and uh, now we have uh, 32 region code in current samples. So for example, for region code four, it will be translated for WW underscore two. WW stands for worldwide, and is actually that mixed geographic uh, option that we talked about that includes uh, um, uh, bots from all over the world. So since this region code is hard-coded inside the loader, we believe that the proper samples are funneled to targeted geolocation by the delivery network distributing private loader itself. So for example, a user in the EU region will be guaranteed not to get a region code that is uh, dedicated to someone in the in USA. So uh, this region code is of course important because it, it is the main definer uh, of which payloads to deliver uh, to bots. Uh, other attributes are of course used, which we'll examine a bit later. So another interesting thing that this core module does is what we call target fingerprinting. So it will search for cryptocurrency wallet software and browser login data for multiple websites related to banking, cryptocurrency, and e-commerce. So these searches are grouped by category, each with a specific target, cold wallets, browser wallets, banking websites, etc. So when a target is identified, this category is marked as, as present. So this information is not exfiltrated or anything. It just marked that, that it, it exists on, on, on the infected host. So this can be used by operators that can set an option to serve payloads only when a target for a certain category was identified on the infected host. So for example, an actor that wants to deliver a stealer and only interested in crypto wallets will check if this category is present on the, on the, on the infected hosts before delivering uh, their payloads. This avoids delivering the payload to all the botnet and only to interesting targets. So 
The core module will uh, communicate using HTTP POST requests. It uses a more robust algorithm and actually makes sense because this is the core functionality. Other modules are using simple uh, XOR algorithms. So it will rely on password-based key derivation function, AES, and HMAC validation. The password used for uh, password-based key derivation function it has been the same since uh, the inception of private loader, and it is used to generate the AES and HMAC validation uh, keys. So uh, the resulting packet will be Base64 encoded before being transmitted over the network. So the C2 will have all the information, including the password, uh, to actually derive the proper keys, validate the message, and then decrypt the, the cipher text and get the contents of the message. So private loader supports the deployment of two types of payloads, uh, Windows.exe executables and browser extensions. So browser extensions are installed silently by uh, modifying the uh, Chromium uh, uh, configuration files uh, uh, to load the, the, the extension in the next run. So th the request messages used to, to, to retrieve these download URLs are get extensions and get links. So both accept the same uh, parameters, uh, the region code, which we talked about earlier, and then the exit country uh, of the bot. And then an unknown value of 10, which we couldn't figure out uh, what it was, but we think it's, uh, it's, it could be a version, could be something else, uh, but it's always hard-coded uh, in, the, in the messages. So for an example uh, request like this, uh, we have a, a, a response uh, containing the URLs, uh, arguments, and IDs of the payloads. Uh, I removed most, uh, most of the payloads and kept only two elements in the JSON list because usually we, we will get uh, dozens or a couple dozen of payloads uh, to execute, to download and execute. So the ID here, right, you see the ID minus one, this one denotes the service module. And the ID 11 is uh, a payload that, that is uh, downloaded and, and executed. So, of course, the core module must relay information back regarding the installed payloads uh, to the C2, so the clients will have proof of execution. So, it uses the add logger stat message followed by a flattened uh, JSON uh, dictionary. So, it will only um, report back the IDs of the payloads that were executed. For, for example, here, the ID minus one for the service module and ID 11 for uh, that other executable. So lastly, the service module. Uh, so this module will ensure persistence. Uh, it will ensure persistence at logon first. So it does this in two ways, either using a Windows service or using a scheduled task. And this is determined by a Boolean value that is hard-coded uh, inside the service module. Uh, and then it will set up a scheduled task that, is, uh, that executes every hour. And the, the, uh, the persistent location is the program files directory. So it will communicate with the main C2 as well, uh, using the service communication.php endpoint. And as we said before, it will update itself, and it will receive a download URL to execute another loader module. And private loader, uh, it's for private loaders to always keep running. So we have started tracking private loader in early September 2021. Uh, the goal was to automate the whole life cycle uh, of an infection for each sample. So we start from a loader component, and then we want to get installs and get the service module. I repeat this uh, for each sample. So we have done this replication using config extractors and network protocol emulation, and the goal is cr to create bots from various countries so we can milk uh, the botnet as much as we can and get uh, as much payloads as we can. So we opted to use passive bots because we want to avoid raising any alarms on, on, on the operator side because uh, if, you, if we send statistics back, for example, uh, there will be some concerns on the, cli on the, cli on the PPI client side which uh, may introduce some countermeasures that will uh, inhibit our, our, our abilities to, to keep track in private loader. So uh, the last goal is to classify as many malware families uh, as we can uh, that were uh, dropped by this malware family. So this is how it works. So we get a loader, a loader module from VirusTotal. We extract the loader C2s and the region code integer, integer, and then we spawn an emulated loader bot. Loader bot will download the core module. It will extract uh, whatever necessary from there, but also map the region code integer uh, to the appropriate string. And then we'll use the main C2 that was uh, retrieved from the emulated loader bot. So the core module will uh, spawn itself multiple emulators from multiple exit countries that will probe the main C2 to retrieve the installs. So these installs will be retrieved and then will be fed to our malware intelligence uh, system that will classify uh, known families uh, of these payloads. 
So this allowed us to gather some statistics. So these statistics are from September 2021 to mid-December uh, of the same year. So we see here uh, the unique hashes downloaded by the region code. Uh, we notice that mostly the worldwide region code is used, and this makes sense because it's the cheapest option and it will offer operators uh, most coverage possible on, around the globe. Uh, and we see uh, basically uh, little or, or, uh, an, or no usage of, of, of targeted uh, uh, geolocations. So in this other graph, we have the unique hashes that were downloaded by country code of our emulators. So we see here more or less of a, of a less um, uh, disparate um, distribution uh, of these because it makes sense actually because multiple uh, uh, region codes are, are for worldwide uh, targets. So uh, we, could, we, we, we could see uh, the... the um, uh, so basically we see like... Uh, for example, uh, the most popular country is the U.S., and least popular country, uh, countries are Mexico and New Zealand. So the difference here is 4,000 hashes, and this could be explained uh, by either that these regions, the worldwide regions, do not include uh, countries like this, or uh, could be explained by an, by an option that we know exists in the private lower backend that allows uh, operators to restrict even more uh, the number of countries uh, that payloads are delivered for, even in, this, in these worldwide regions. So here uh, are results from our malware classification system for payloads that were downloaded by uh, private loader. So we see here the unique downloaded hashes per malware family. The most popular payload which takes the big part of the cake is smoke loader, and then it's followed by a red line, uh, Vidar, Raccoon, GCleaner, et cetera. So we see here uh, what we most expect from a uh, paper install service, uh, a lot of commodity malware. But to our surprise, uh, Tracking private loader allowed us to see some unusual uh, deli malware uh, deliveries that, that is dropping for, from threat actors that are usually interested in performing banking fraud or uh, deploying ransomware on high value targets. So it was deploying banking trojans, and uh, the first instance of this was an indirect one. So we saw a smoke loader sample delivered from private loader that delivered the cube out banking trojan. So this revealed a new botnet ID, star01. So uh, there was a talk yesterday about smoke loader and Qbot was there, but this is not uh, a, a usual delivery mechanism uh, uh, for Qbot. So uh, fast forward a few days on October 31st, private loaders dropped directly the Kronos Bank Trojan. On November 1st, uh, it dropped Danabot with affiliate ID40, Drydex the 10444 botnet, and Trickbot with multiple GTAX. So, uh, it also uh, dropped this for a single day. So all of these were dropped for 24 hours and then they stopped. So Danabot, Drydex, and Trickbot were often bundled together in the same file. So uh, we were wondering if it's possible that the same actor is operating all these botnets and using private loader to deliver these files. Because of course, delivering in a single file is much cheaper than delivering in three separate files. So uh, we, we were wondering if they opted for that. Uh, also, these short outbursts of activity, like in 24 hours and then they stop, they deliver nothing. Uh, Afterward, never see the families. Uh, wondering if these operators are actually testing this paper install service uh, as another way for malware delivery. Uh, a few days um, after that, on November 14th, we started seeing uh, private loader dropping Danabot with affiliate ID, also ID4, also for a single day. Uh, but uh, starting late February 2022, the new version of the Danabot banking trojan uh, 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 belonging to affiliate ID5 uh, started being, uh, being delivered through private loader in, in, in very big amounts and, and, and they're actually still using it. So I think they really like the service and using it for, for, uh, as a main distribution method or one of the main distribution methods for their banking trojan. So ransomware. So, Paper install services will advise against installing ransomware because uh, ransomware will render the machines unusable. So if an operator deploys ransomware, all the machines are encrypted, another one will deploy information stealer, information stealer won't get anything, bad reputation for the service. So, uh, however, the, uh, the cyber criminals will not respect rules, so uh, we see ransomware, although uh, very rarely. So ransomware that we saw from private loader were lockbit, uh, this one was dropped in the same time frame where we saw the banking trojans. 
Uh, and then the stop deja vu ransomware, uh, which, uh, which it has been dropping um, uh, uh, during uh, the, all its lifetime, basically. So tracking private loader allowed us to discover some, some new malware families. Um, a few of them are, are, for example, the Rice Pro Stealer, which we discovered recently. Uh, it appeared in December 2021, programmed in C++, and it's from the same developers of Private Loader. So uh, we knew about this because there are striking code similarities, striking beha behavioral similarities uh, between Rise Pro and Private Loader. And they also went from being a, mono a, mono a monolithic malware to transforming and becoming uh, a modular malware, including uh, a loader and a core module that operate in the same way as Private Loader. So, um, this stealer includes some download and execute functionality, but until now we've only seen uh, crypto miners uh, delivered. Uh, another interesting uh, loader was Disco Loader, so we called it that way because it's using uh, the Discord CDN uh, as a main uh, as a main uh, host for for its payload, and it will usually chunk the payloads in in in. Um, in a few chunks and then concatenate them in memory and execute them. So this is of course in .NET and we have been able to find multiple .NET loaders uh, and add coverage for them thanks to private loader. So to conclude, uh, paper install services have been around for a long time. They are an accessible and affordable way for malware operators to offload their malware delivery to uh, a third party and actually focus on the development of their own malware. So these services are often overlooked when it comes to installed payloads and rightfully so because they're only delivering uh, commodity malware, nothing too interesting. But if we take private loader in it as an example, it could be proof that uh, these operators have some ties or have some connections to more advanced crews. Uh, and uh, this warrants uh, more research into the area. And last thing, please don't download correct software. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, okay. Uh, hello, Neil from Netcraft. Great presentation. Uh, I was wondering if you had um, done any analysis on the cracked, uh, on the website that allowed you to download those cracked software. So if you try to download some binaries using different IP addresses, or you mentioned a lot of redirects, if you had done like any analysis on those. Yeah, so basically what we did was, uh, at first we started navigating to these websites and trying to download these, these setup files, uh, but we found out that uh, most of them will get uh, eventually uploaded to virus total and we can just collect them from there. And our model for emulating will enable us to uh, extract all of these and, and get the different uh, region codes for them. So it was basically easy for us to just uh, get, get them from, from virus total. But there is great research from Sophos Labs that uh, actually goes, into, goes behind these uh, infrastructures and infrastructure and explains uh, how it works. Hi, Jose here, Bluely. Nice talk, really nice research. Um, I was wondering, did you manage to have a relation between the malware and, and any advertisement in any forum related to the service, the paper install service? Uh, we do have some leads, but uh, the TLP of this talk uh, <laughs> cannot allow it to cannot allow us to share that information. But uh, but yeah, we do have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, any other question? Yes, in front. Uh, I've got a question about Disco Loader, because um, as always when we're looking at .NET things and trying to come up with names to them, I know of a .NET loader that's loading quite a lot from CDN.discord app as well, and I'm wondering if it's the same one. And does it download reversed, uh, well, they pretend to be image files, but are often a reverse DLL? Uh, that's another one we found through Private Loader as well. But uh, the Disco Loader one will usually have uh, uh, an, up, uh, an uppercase uh, hexadecimal file name .gpg. But it's not reversed, no. Yeah. 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 Thank you. The final question. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.